If you're at all interested in horses, you know about the Alcateki horses. And the fact you probably remember most about them is how shiny their coat is. And if you're like me, you've probably wondered many times, what makes them shine so much? What is so special about their hair? Well, that's what I'm about to explore in this video. When I was very young, I got this book at Christmas as a Christmas gift. Now, the cover is long gone, but I still have the book. And on the first page of this book is this now famous picture of an Alcateki. I was mesmerized when I saw it, as many were, I'm sure. I never actually saw one in the flesh until recently, for some good reason. They're actually pretty rare. And between their ancient origin, their particular look, and their oddly shinely coat, volumes of work and layman articles of all type have been written about them, some of them embellishing an already fascinating story and mixing facts with fiction. As you know, on this channel, I try to stick as close as I can to facts. I'm interested in the science of horses, and for most of my video, I rely on published scientific papers to get to the bottom of the subject I'm trying to cover. Surprisingly, I was not able to do this in this case. There were no research paper on the Alcateki hair and what makes it so special. I looked. I really did. Now, if you know of any, please link them down in the description. I'd be happy to read them. I did, however, find a lot of fluff article about the breed, some of them clearly written by AI and just repackaged for different websites, sometimes with exactly the same text. And a lot of video on YouTube about the Alcateki are actually not much better, I have to say. Since there were no research paper explaining it all and linking it neatly to a genetic mutation of some sort, to understand what makes the Alcateki shine, I needed to go back to first principle. Going back to first principle is a tested and true method of investigation in science. It's a little bit like in police drama when the investigator asks, okay, what do we know for sure? And let's go from there. In science, if you don't know the answer, but you have some solid facts at your disposal, you can use those to propose a hypothesis. And then you test your hypothesis against observation and you adjust accordingly until you get something you can actually test empirically. And that's exactly what I did in this case. And I will take you through what I found out. And along the way, I will debunk some information that is floating around that just doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's get a few easy ones out of the way. Alcateke are iridescent. No, that, that, this is iridescent. Iridescence has to do with the refraction of the light at a different wavelength, and it's influenced by the angle of the observer to the subject. Alcateke are not shining light back at us in a different wavelength. They're not green or magenta or blue or any other color. Alcateke have a metallic shine. Yes, that is true. Their shine has been described as metallic for ages, and that is actually a good name for it. Think about how a metal reflects the light. It shines it back, directly back at us, because metal are reflective, and their smooth surface makes them very shiny. Alcateke have a different shine than other breeds. Hmm, do they? You see this horse here that appears in so many videos or article about the Alcateke? Well, he's actually not an Alcateke, he's a Lusitano. His name is Caetano, and I know him because I owned one of his daughters for a while. He is a Cromello, and he does have a very striking shine to his coat. This horse here is white and showing a very odd shine. It could be due to some sort of image processing, it's hard to tell. But it's definitely shiny, and it's definitely not an Alcateki, not with those ears. It's more likely a Nukra or a Baluchi horse or Baluki horse from Pakistan. And what about this horse with this deep golden hue on this coat? No, it's not an Alcateki, it's definitely a quarter horse. What about this one? Some say that the Alcateki were the famous golden horses or the heavenly horses mentioned in ancient Chinese text. Yes, actually, more than likely they were. From archaeological, historical, and genetic work, it would appear to be true. We know that horses that drifted in or were brought eastward into China from the western central plain of Asia were most likely the ancestors of today's Alcateki. When we consider that before their arrival, the horses that were in what is now China were mostly bay, black, and chestnut, the arrival of Palomino and buckskin horses would have seen really miraculous. What about the Alcateki are shiny and it's part of their breed description? No, no, it is not. Many Alcateki are not more shiny than your average horse. You can see here a purebred Alcateki in a demonstration, and clearly they're not all the super shiny horse one might have expected to see. 
They actually come in all solid color, black, bay, chestnut, but also dilute, palomino and buckskin, as well as double dilute, such as cremello and perlino, as well as in dun and in gray. But what causes some of them to shine so oddly? Like I said, to figure this out, we have to go back to first principle. Thankfully, we're only dealing with two things here, the hair and the way that the light interacts with the hair. Let's start with the hair. And where I found information on this, I think you will find maybe a little bit surprising. So fundamentally, the hair of the horse is the same as most mammals. It's comprised of three parts. The very thin cuticle made of thin scale, the cortex, which takes the largest part of the hair, that's the part that contains the pigment in the form of pigment granules, and those pigment granules are found all throughout the cortex. That's what gives the hair its color. And finally, at the center, there is the medulla. The medulla is devoid of pigment, it's sometimes hollow in part, However, sometimes the pigment granules are concentrated right at the boundary of the medulla and the cortex. It's what gives the medulla the look of being dark in micrograph, when in fact, the cells in there contain no pigments. The entire hair shaft is made of keratin, keratin all the way through. Keratin is also what makes our nails, by the way. Interestingly, the information I found on the structure of the horsehair specifically mostly came from forensic paper. You see, forensic science is very interested in being able to distinguish the human hair from a horse hair or a cow hair or a wolf hair. And it turns out that every species has a very specific type of hair structure. In the case of the horse, the cuticle, like I mentioned, is very distinctive. But so is the ratio of the cortex to medulla. In the case of the horse, it's roughly one to three. So that means that the medulla is generally a bit less than a third of the hair. And that sets it apart from other mammals. The second part of the equation, of course, is how the light interacts with the hair. And again, you might be surprised where I found a lot of information on this. Here are the various ways that light can interact with any material. For our purpose, we're mostly looking at reflection, transmission, and refraction. The other interactions simply don't apply here. Reflection. Because light certainly bounces off the cuticle of the hair, this applies. Transmission. For dark hair, this doesn't apply because the light just can't get through the dark hair, but it does play a role in paler or white hair. And finally, refraction. This is how light can get through a transparent medium, but can get deflected by what is essentially is the change in density. Keratin certainly has a different density than air, so we are definitely dealing with refraction when we're looking at the interaction of light into paler hair. Again, in dark hair, it's a moot point because the light doesn't get through. As to how the light interact with hair as a whole, we have the cosmetic industry to thank for. You see, understanding what may shine is big business, and it's been looked at in very deep detail, I discovered. And while the hair structure is a bit different between human and horses, the science of the shine appears to be the same. The most shiny hair are those that are generally all the same length and able to lie smooth or curl all in the same way. Uh, clearly not the case with mine. Those whose uh, cuticle are smooth are better able to reflect the light. And studies have shown that hair with little pigment, like blonde or very pale brown hair, as well as gray hair, reflects the light in a slightly different way. Let's get back to our horse. A few observations I had when looking at various pictures and footage of Alcateki. Number one, a lot of those pictures are those of stallions, and stallions of any breed generally have shinier coat because of the testosterone that makes their coat slightly oily. Not enough that you can feel it, but it ensures that the hair cuticle lays nice and flat and reflects the light better. Brushing and keeping their hair clean also help, of course, promote the shine, and so is keeping the horse under a smooth fabric blanket. Anything to make the hair lay nice and flat and keep the oil of the coat well distributed. And of course, there's the good old show shine, and that's what it does. It keeps the cuticle nicely oiled, giving this a uh, little bit of extra shine to any horse. Alcateki breeder in their ancestral land of Turkmenistan were known to keep their prized stallion blanketed almost all the time, supposedly under seven blankets of felt and wool that each had a different name. Well, of course they did. This probably came from wanting these horses to keep their hair short and smooth and to increase the shine that they so admired. Observation number two, pictures and video showing Alcateki shimmering in the sun 
were usually taken in the summer. How is this relevant? Well, it speaks to the thinness thinness, sorry, it speaks to the thinness of the coat. Alcateki already have thin coat, thinner than other breeds, thin manes and tail too. By the way, if you want a horse with a lot of mane and tail flowing in the wind, the Alcateki is not the breed for you. If you take a look at this picture, for example, this stallion, you can clearly see its pink skin showing right through its very thin coat. Hey, I just wanted to take a few seconds here to really thank my Patreon members and my YouTube channel member for their support. Thank you so much, you guys. It really means a lot to me and it keeps me going. Okay, with all those facts and observation in hand, let's look at some of the explanation that have been proposed out there for the Alcateki shininess. The curious effect is due to the fact that the protein in the coat emits these metallic iridescence when light falls on them. First of all, I can guarantee you that the coat or its protein does not emit anything. They do not make light. And again, metallic iridescence, they are not iridescent. How about this one? The metallic sheen, often golden, is due to the structure of its hair, which reflects the light in a unique way. Wow, can't get much more generic than that without explaining anything. How about this next one? The opaque core of the hair is narrower and in some case absent. This allows the light to shine right through it, through it refracts a little. Interesting, they would seem to be a part of the hair that would be missing in this case. That would make them very different horses for sure. Although, what about all the Alcateki that are not particularly shiny? Are they also missing a part of their hair? On another site, we read, Alcateki coat have narrower opaque cores. Again, this idea of cores, what is the core? Allowing the light to shine through and produce the shimmering gleam. Okay, basically it's the same explanation I just read earlier, but it's just been wordsmithed a bit. You know, I was really happy to see that there was a reference attached to this statement, but Sadly, this reference had very little to do with the statement and it offered actually no proof. It was very disappointing. Narrower opaque core. Do they mean a thinner medulla? That would require for sure a significant difference in the morphology of the hair because like I said earlier, horses have a set structure to their hair that is unique to the species. So I'm skeptical, but okay, maybe they have a particular mutation that disrupts the normal formation of the hair. Hey, by the way, speaking of mutation, Alcateki do have a rare mutation so far unique to their breed. It causes foals that occasionally inherit two recessive mutated genes from their parents to be born without any hair. When they looked into where the hair follicle should have been on these horses, the researcher found a profound malformation that prevented the hair from growing at all. And they were able to link it to a specific gene. And there's now a genetic test for it. Hopefully then breeders can prevent this from happening. Now, could this be linked in some way to the healthy Alcateki having thinner hair? Perhaps. But how is this related to the shine? If the shine was because of the thinner hair overall, then all Alcateki would shine in that way, and we saw that is not the case. However, if we want to stay on the explanation, having something to do with the medulla at the core of the hair, what it might be is that the concentration of pigment around the medulla is different in some Alcateki. We know that some genes can control the distribution of pigment within the hair cortex. The Dunn gene does exactly this. It puts all the pigment granule on one side of the cortex of the hair, leaving the other side more transparent. If that was the case with the pigment in the hair of the Alcateki, then it would affect the look of the base, the black and the chestnut less because well, they have so much pigment in the cortex of the hair that it really doesn't matter. Here's another and final observation that starts to bring it all together. Looking at all these pictures, the very special shine shows up mostly on dilute color. The palominos, the buckskin, the perlinos, and the cremellos. Is there a clue in there? I think so. You see, the horse with this cream gene have a lot of trouble making one of the two pigment horses can produce, the pheomelanine. And when it's weakly expressed, it, it shows up as yellow or even cream. So palomino horses are horses that already have an inability to make black pigment because of one mutation, and their ability to make the reddish pigment is reduced further by another mutation. And that's what gives us the various shade of yellow and orange in their coat. But what if the distribution of the little pigment there was 
was to be distributed in the cortex and not concentrated in and around the medulla. Then the light could get through those hair more easily. With more light going through the hair, you don't have to invoke anything weird happening. It just gets reflected and refracted within the hair shaft more easily than if the hair was very dark. That could also be what explains that other breeds also have that really shimmering coat when they have very little pigment in their coat, like the case of the Lusitano that I mentioned earlier in the video. In fact, this bouncing of the light on the granule of pigment might help explain this golden hue of the Alcateki, since the pigment that is present in their hair is the pale brown or yellow pigment. If you combine this hypothesis with the fact that the hair of the Alcateki is thinner generally, especially in the summer, this could, I think, explain the extra shine. Add to this the normal extra reflective cuticle of the stallions, the excellent grooming they must get, and you get a pretty shiny horse. Now, the same horse in winter coat would not be as reflective as they do grow a thicker coat, and a thicker coat would simply absorb more of the light by the simple interaction of more hair. And let's not forget that winter coat don't usually lie flat. They kind of stand up to trap hair and help insulate against the cold. I have found a source of Alcateki hair, and I hope to be able to look at them under the microscope in the future and see if my hypothesis holds up. If you've enjoyed this deep dive combining science and horses, then you might also like this other video there where I talk about other aspects of horses' color.